On May 7, 2024, Ethan Cannert stood at the bottom of the final 400, one of the steepest and deadliest areas on Mount Whitney. He had been waiting for hours for two other climbers who had summited the peak with him just earlier that day, but he was beginning to feel worried as they should have reached him by now. Eventually, Ethan would have to abandon their meeting point and ascend the mountain to call for help. Mount Whitney is not typically a mountain that many would consider to be extremely dangerous. While it is technical, many climbers with varying skill levels summit the peak each year. Yet in 2024, over a week, it would transform into one of the deadliest peaks, and Ethan Cannert was at the heart of one of those tragedies. This is his story. Mount Whitney is the tallest mountain in the contiguous United States, standing at a whopping 14,505 feet. This giant is located in East Central California, right on the border between Inyo and Tulare counties. Part of the Sierra Nevada range, Mount Whitney is a favorite spot for hikers and climbers. It offers various routes, from easier paths to tough, challenging climbs. The level of danger can change each year based on weather conditions, the amount of snow and ice, and other environmental factors but there are plenty of signs and warnings spread throughout the peak. There are two main routes to climb Mount Whitney, the Mount Whitney Trail and the Mountaineer Route. Both start at the same place, the Whitney Postal Store. The Whitney Trail is 11 miles long one way and is a rather simple climb that thousands per year attempt. The Mountaineer Route, on the other hand, is over five miles long and has some of the most technical areas in all of the U.S., including the final 400, a steep 65 degree slope for 400 feet that ends near the summit. This is the route that experienced climbers take. Similar to all high altitude peaks, Mount Whitney has risks. Before you even start climbing, it's important to get used to the high altitude. Spending a few days at places above 9,000 feet can help your body adjust. This is called acclimatizing, and it can prevent serious problems like acute mountain sickness or AMS. AMS can make you feel dizzy, nauseous, or give you a headache. And if it gets worse, it can lead to more dangerous conditions like high altitude cerebral edema or high altitude pulmonary edema. If you start feeling sick, the best thing to do is to go back down to lower altitudes right away. The weather on Mount Whitney can also be very unpredictable. Even in the spring and summer, you might encounter snow and ice. It's essential to bring the right gear like crampons and ice axes and know how to use them. Obviously, other important items would be bringing the correct supplies such as lights, batteries, water, and food. But the most important item is knowing your limits. In May of 2024, Andrew Nizial and Patty Ballon were two climbers who wanted to attempt reaching the summit of Mount Whitney. Andrew, age 28, came from South Lake Tahoe. He was known for his deep appreciation of life filled with climbing and adventure. Andrew regularly shared his experiences on social media, posting about his outdoor explorations. He was not an amateur climber. Andrew was very proud of the life he had built around his passion, and this passion he shared with Patty, who he thought was the most fun person he had ever met. Patty, who was 29 years old, had just finished her PhD at UC Davis. She loved the lifestyle Andrew lived, and soon after meeting him, they were joined by the hip. Patty was also a talented outdoor photographer, posting on Instagram and other official websites of their travels and experiences. In early May, Patty and Andrew had decided to travel to the Southern Sierra together, attempting to ski Mount Shasta, a well-known tall mountain in California. According to her Instagram post before their trip, Patty had recently completed a month-long 800-mile hike along the Arizona Trail. She also shared her adventures snowboarding in Lake Tahoe, running marathons, rock climbing, and hiking the Pacific Crest Trail. However, on May 3rd, while trying to climb Mount Shasta, they had to turn back before reaching the summit because the winds were just too strong. This would lead them to an even more dangerous route, the Mountaineer's Route, on Mount Whitney. The trail includes a spot known as the Notch, 
which is a flat area where climbers can rest. The Mount Whitney Mountaineers route itself goes up a chute with an angle of 25 to 30 degrees and reaches the notch at 14,100 feet. From there, the final push to the summit becomes even steeper, with an angle of more than 40 degrees. This last part of the climb requires technical climbing skills, the right equipment, and a high level of physical fitness. Now, you know it's bad when a region that relies on tourism tells you to stay away, but that's what ski resorts, local authorities, and the CHP are saying when it comes to visiting Tahoe this weekend. On May 3rd through the 5th, a winter storm hit the Sierra Nevada mountains, dropping more than a foot of snow at higher elevations, hence the reason for the duo to stop climbing Mount Shasta. On April 25th, Inyo County Search and Rescue warned that winter conditions still existed on Mount Whitney and that climbers should be very careful when trying to reach the top. The Inyo County Sheriff's Preventative Education Committee expressed concerns that the deadly accidents on Mount Baldy earlier this year might also happen on Mount Whitney this spring. Although Mount Whitney is a popular goal because it is not very technically difficult, it is still a challenging climb with serious risks, especially with the snow and ice that was expected to remain until at least late July this year. When the weather began to clear on May 5th, Patty and Andrew decided to climb and ski down Mount Whitney. They were confident in their abilities, but decided they still wanted help from someone who had a lot of experience, and they knew the perfect person to join them. Ethan Cannert was a friend of Patty and Andrew, and after he was asked to join the duo on the mountain, well, it didn't take long for him to say yes. So the trio would begin to prepare for their climb on May 6th, packing their supplies, snacks, and water. The trio planned a summit via the Mountaineer route, and on the way up the peak, they would leave their skis at an area called The Notch, just below the final 400. From there, they would ski back down to their camp at the Upper Boy Scout Lake. Their route was planned, their supplies were prepared, and all they had to do was wait for the morning of May 7th. The trio would wake up as the sun was just coming over the horizon, reflecting off the rock and snow on the mountain. They would eat a quick breakfast, grab their supplies, and begin the trek at approximately 5 a.m. The climb is normally five hours long, and as the trio moved closer to the summit, everything was pretty normal. They were having a good time climbing the mountain, even reaching the final 400 ahead of schedule. They stashed their skis and began the final, most technical part of the climb. At approximately 10.15 a.m., the trio would eclipse the final ridge and summit the peak. They took a few minutes to soak in the view, catch their breath, and grab a quick snack. They stood on the summit for about 45 minutes before beginning their descent at 11 a.m. Ethan was honestly feeling great, and he decided to make the descent quickly, leaving Patty and Andrew as they were moving just a tad slower. So it was during the final 400 that Ethan picked up his pace and left the duo with a promise they would all meet up at the notch to finish their ski descent. Ethan would reach the notch and begin waiting for the duo, but Andrew and Patty didn't show up. Ethan would wait for over an hour before he was forced with the decision, leave his friends somewhere on the peak or continue to wait. Ethan would eventually decide to strap on his skis and begin the final part of the descent alone. He eventually returned to their camp at Upper Boy Scout Lake at 3.30 p.m. and contacted Search and Rescue. He said they both had cell service most of the way up the route, but neither responded to his messages. There was still no word from either of them when he sent the message. Ethan would also post in a Facebook private group that he had returned to their high camp at Upper Boy Scout Lake and descended from the summit plateau down the final 400, a very steep section of snow before Andrew and Patty. Search and rescue would begin combing the mountain, but as the hours passed, no answers were found. Then two days after the duo went missing on May 9th, the Inyo County Sheriff's Office would finally share that they had found the two missing climbers. Both were deceased. The details are still not confirmed, and they may never be, but it was assumed the duo had slipped and fallen somewhere on the final 400 because their bodies were reportedly found nearly a thousand feet lower than the notch. Unfortunately, this wasn't the only accident that would occur on Mount Whitney in early May. On May 12th, another climber, 26-year-old, Sahaj Singh Sagu, was attempting to climb the Mountaineer route. Sahaj was a local shop owner of Spears Market in Forestville and was described as being loved by his community. While attempting to climb the peak at approximately 9,600 feet, a rock fall would be started on the Ebersbacher ledges 
a notorious part of the route that is famous for requiring hikers to use both their hands and feet to scramble up, making it inherently risky. In early spring, it becomes even more dangerous due to steep snow, loose rocks, and unpredictable weather. One of these rocks would strike Sahaj, causing serious injuries. He would never make it off the mountain. A helicopter crew from the California Highway Patrol lowered a search team member to the site and it was determined that the hiker had died from his injuries. Later on May 13th, the sheriff's office instructed people going to Mount Whitney that they should stick together, go back if things got dangerous, make smart choices, and they will need to obtain permission to hike on the Mountaineer's route or the regular hiking trail any time of the year. From May 1st to November 1st, only a certain number of people are allowed in the area. I didn't think that I would be starting this climbing season off with a video about Mount Whitney, but here we are. Unfortunately, even the most mundane and simple peaks can take the most lives due to overconfidence and climbers being underprepared for their trek, but sometimes you can do all the right things and it just doesn't matter. But I guess that is just mountaineering. Thanks for watching. Until next time.